Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at section 3 of the Purple Booklet, questions 33 to 36. This question is about some alkali hydroxides, and the first question, question 33, asks what order of the pH values could you expect for saturated solutions of these three hydroxides? So the first way I like to think of this, and there's, there's two ways I like to think of this question, but the first one is that if you remember that the stronger a base is, the more soluble it is, um, the greater the effect uh, on the pH is associated with a greater uh, solubility. So if we order it by solubility, we get NaOH to be the most soluble from the table above, and then we get potassium hydroxide, and finally lithium hydroxide. And because this is the order of solubilities, it's also going to be the order of the effect on the pH. And so this is a way of saying that the pH values are going to be in this order too. Now that's one way of thinking of it, but the other way is to look at the water dissociation equation, which is this one here, that there's an equilibrium between water and protons and hydroxide ions. The more soluble it is, um, the more hydroxide ions you're going to be adding to the solution when it's dissolved. And if you increase the concentration of hydroxide ions, you're moving the position of equilibrium to the left hand side. And therefore, you're decreasing the concentration of hydrogen ions. Now, because hydrogen ions are inversely proportional um, to the pH, we see that the more hydroxide ions you add, the greater the effect on the pH. And so the more soluble it is, the larger the pH. So you can order it in this way here, which means the answer for number 33 is going to be C. If we look at question 34 now, it says, a solution is made by dissolving 80 grams of sodium hydroxide in 100 milliliters of water. What is the pH of this solution? Well, working out the pH of this uh, involves a couple of steps. The first is to work out um, how much sodium hydroxide are we adding. So what is 80 grams of sodium hydroxide in moles? So to work out the number of moles, we want to divide the mass by the molar mass, which is going to be 80 grams over 40. 40 is given in the table as the molar mass for sodium hydroxide here. So that gives us two moles of sodium hydroxide. So let's think about what that means. If you have two moles of sodium hydroxide, you end up with two moles of sodium ions and two moles of hydroxide ions that are released. So that means that the concentration of hydroxide ions in the water is going to be two moles and that's going to be per um, 100 milliliters. Great. So if we know that, and we're given in the question that the Kw, the water dissociation constant, um, shows us that the hydrogen ions concentration multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ions is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And we know the concentration of the hydroxide ions. We can work out what the concentration of the protons are and work out the pH from there. So the concentration of the protons is going to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the concentration of the hydroxide ions. The concentration is going to be the number of moles over the volume, so that's 2 moles over 0 0.1 litre, so 100 moles is 0 0.1 litres. So that gives us an answer. Of, and I'm just checking this on my calculator. Um, of 5 times 10 to the minus 16. So now let's work out the pH, which is going to be minus log of the hydrogen ions. And the pH, therefore, is going to be 15.3. And because the answer is greater than 15, we know the answer of number 34 is going to be D. Okay, so let's look at question uh, 35 now. I'll just do it up here to save some space. It says that an alkali metal hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide to form hydrogen carbonate compounds. So they're used to remove carbon dioxide gas from enclosed atmospheres. Considering that 100 grams of each of these hydroxides are put in one of these atmospheres, there'll be a volume of carbon dioxide removed. 
which would be the most effective at removing a volume of carbon dioxide. So let's look at the table and think about what this means. So if you've got a fixed mass of each of these, that doesn't actually really tell you that much about the number of molecules. So each of these will react with one molecule of carbon dioxide. So you're looking at which of these um, reacts with the most number of carbon dioxide molecules. So within 100 grams, um, how many molecules are, are present for each of these hydroxides? And this is where we want to look at molar mass for our answer, because uh, within 100 grams, we end up with a higher number of moles of lithium than sodium than potassium. And so that will be the decreasing order of the number of carbon dioxide molecules that are reduced or replaced, or in other words, um, taken out uh, of the atmosphere because there are less moles, there are less molecules to react with carbon dioxide for a given mass. So that gives us an answer, therefore, of A for number 35, and it's simply just to do with the molar mass. Now for number 36, it looks in more detail about um, what the equation might look like. And it says in number 35 um, that these reactions form hydrogen carbonate compounds. So we can rule out these two as being um, the correct answer because these are not hydrogen carbonate products. And it talks about the initial reaction um, that takes place. So we know that it's not going to be um, C or D. Now, you might know that hydrogen carbonate compounds are soluble in water. And this is an aqueous environment as we've got from here. So we know it can't be A either. And that leaves us with the answer for 36 to be B. So that was questions uh, 33 to 36 of section 3 of the Purple Booklet. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.